This is Mia Farrow, quite possibly the most scorned woman in the history of the universe. A woman who has spent the last 30 years pursuing a vendetta against a man who left her. She is a jilted lover whose vanity and narcissism has turned her obsessive in her pursuit of revenge. She has enlisted the help of a man I like to call the creepy android to help pursue this vendetta. I would even wager that she built the creepy android to position him in the public sphere to better pursue this vendetta. Mia Farrow has never married again, as far as I know has never even had another long-term romantic relationship. Too much of her life remains focused on a man she once loved. A man whose total ruination, both personally and professionally, is a dogged fixation. Woody Allen is now an 85-year-old man who has been persecuted and vilified for 30 years for something he did not do, for a crime no rational person could possibly agree he committed. HBO's new Woody Allen Mia Farrow documentary is another example of a media disinterested in the facts of the case and only interested in helping Mia and the creepy android pursue this relentless, reckless vendetta against a man who has a wife and a family and simply wants to be left alone. Here are some points to examine, things that HBO will not be discussing in any meaningful way. Number one, child molestation is pathological. Pedophilia is a sick compulsion. Someone who decides to commit this act just the once, upon their own child no less, is a complete anomaly. Lest we forget there have been no allegations of child abuse at any other point in Woody Allen's life before or after the allegation from Mia Farrow. The allegation was looked at forensically by two independent bodies in two separate states and it was concluded no crime had occurred. In the years following this disgusting allegation from Mia, Woody Allen has been allowed to adopt children of his own, a process that would have been extremely careful and judicious owing to the earlier allegation. If Mia, Dylan and the creepy android still believe that a crime was committed, they and HBO should ask why there is such a malevolent conspiracy in the states of New York and Connecticut to absolve Woody Allen of such a wicked crime. We have been asked to believe the word of a jilted lover and her surrogates over multiple doctors, child psychologists and social workers who conducted thorough investigations. There seems though to be this insistence by the Farrow camp to conflate liking young adult women with pedophilia. But if a man who likes young adult women is also a child molester, then what does that make Frank Sinatra, who married Mia Farrow when she was 21, he was 50. Number two. Why wasn't Mia relieved when it was proven Dylan wasn't abused? If the narrative is true, that Dylan as a seven-year-old suddenly announced one day that her father had molested her, the authenticity of her claim should have been treated with suspicion. Children have active imaginations and do not always have a firm grasp on the distinction between reality and fantasy. They are also highly susceptible. The first thing a concerned parent would do if your child suddenly made this outrageous claim is to take them to the proper authorities to have this verified. Mia had allowed Woody Allen to adopt Dylan and he had access to Dylan and all of her other children without any kind of prior complaint from Mia. So this allegation should have been highly improbable to her, highly unlikely, unless we want to believe that Mia a woman with a whole brood of kids had been in a relationship with someone she long suspected was a child molester. Uh, three weeks before he went off with Miss Previn. And that's what many people don't understand, that the adoptions of Dylan and Moses by Mr. Allen took place three weeks before Miss Farrow found the pictures of Sunni Previn. Uh, she had adopted the children many years earlier. So that his legal fatherhood was only in existence for less than a month. When two forensic independent investigations found Dylan to have been unharmed, Mia's reaction was very telling. Now imagine your young child alleges they were molested and you take them to the proper authorities who conclude that the child wasn't molested. They have made this judgment after physical and psychological tests. Your first instinct should be to breathe a sigh of relief. Your child hasn't been molested. Your instinct should not be to completely ignore the findings and wish for the molestation to have occurred. This is of course if we believe the narrative that Dylan suddenly one day made this announcement about her father, which I am not inclined to believe. Number three, Dylan Farrow lies. There have been many instances where Dylan Farrow has changed her story over the years, like introducing the train set in the crawl space, which she never mentioned during the initial case in 1992. 
The point made by many astute commentators is that Dylan, Mia Farrow and the creepy android could pursue this case legally. Why don't they? Dylan Farrow could sue Woody Allen in civil court because the statute of limitations is 30 years. Dylan Farrow has been caught being dishonest about this. Because of course they don't want to pursue this case again legally. They would prefer to do what most people with a very flimsy case would do. Try this in a court of public opinion, especially when a mob of incurious victim-obsessed morons on Twitter have such a huge sway over the culture. The creepy android even graduated from Yale Law School. Why doesn't he disabuse his sister of the idea she can't file a civil claim? Why doesn't he volunteer to be her lawyer? The original Yale New Haven investigation took six months to conclude and was conducted by several eminent doctors. Woody Allen recounts in his autobiography that Dylan was knocked unconscious for a particularly invasive procedure to be performed by a specialist who found nothing sinister had happened to her. But of course you'll never hear from HBO or any of the Farrow camp about why these findings were illegitimate. And in an attempt to misdirect, Dylan will often mention Justice Wilk, who cast doubts on the Yale New Haven findings and said that Woody Allen's behavior was grossly inappropriate. Yet Justice Wilk failed to prosecute the case. In fact, the lead prosecutor said, when justifying why no case would be brought against Woody Allen, and what is probably the most disingenuous statement you'll ever hear in your life, that he wanted to prevent Dylan from suffering any more trauma. Now, have you ever heard of a court refusing to prosecute a dangerous criminal and deviant because they didn't want to upset the victim? However much Dylan tries to use Justice Wilkes' summation as evidence of Woody's guilt, the truth is there was no prosecution because there was no case. Number four, the sincerity of the players. There's been a lot of talk about the sincerity of the players involved. My general feeling is that Dylan Farrow is sincere. She actually believes she was molested, only because an utterly crazed, vindictive mother implanted this false memory at a very susceptible age. Does Mia Farrow believe it happened? Let's take a look at the letter Mia Farrow wrote to Woody Allen soon after discovering his affair with Suni. Yes, yes, absolutely. You took my daughter, I'm going to take your daughter. Allen contends that from the moment Mia Farrow discovered the nude pictures he'd taken of Suni, she considered him morally guilty of child molesting, even though Suni was legally an adult. A month before the alleged incident with Dylan, Allen says he found this note on a door while he was at Farrow's house for Dylan's birthday. It reads, child molester at birthday party, molded then abused one sister, now focused on youngest sister, family disgusted. Mia wrote that note, that's oh, yeah. her handwriting. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. This letter was written before August 4th, the date Woody Allen was alleged to have committed the crime. So we are led to believe that Mia Farrow possesses an uncanny talent for prophecy. The letter demonstrates her mindset. The allegation of child abuse was something that had been percolating in her mind, and it is possible the fury over discovering the relationship had made her conflate child abuse with an adult affair and had triggered her into falsifying an act of molestation, especially knowing the damage this would do both professionally and personally to the man who had jilted her. This kind of allegation is made routinely in family courts all over the world. It is by no means a novel approach to retribution. Besides, how exercised does Mia get about actual proven cases of child abuse? In the Roman Polanski Vanity Fair libel trial in 2005, Mia Farrow voluntarily testified at the High Court in London on Polanski's behalf. Polanski is an actual convicted child molester, but yet he had Mia's unconditional support. The one piece of evidence I could submit as an illustration that Mia knows the allegation against Woody Allen is completely false is this episode from 2014. Woody Allen was celebrated at the Golden Globes that year, and both Mia and the creepy android put out sarcastic posts on social media. Because, you know, when a member of your family has been sexually assaulted, you find amusement airing their dirty laundry in a couple of funny tweets, right? Well, it was revealed that Mia Farrow had to sign off for her footage to be used as part of the montage of the Golden Globes, and she did that willingly. If she genuinely believes Woody Allen to be a sexual predator, why on earth would she help the Golden Globes honor him and his work? The creepy android would have known about his mother signing this off, so why didn't he put a stop to it? Have a look at this Mia Farrow interview from 1992. He said that you coached Dylan. Did you ever coach Dylan no. into making up the accusations of sexual abuse? Of course not. No, I mean, 
Dylan was speaking spontaneously and I grabbed a camera and it is clear, I mean the judge has seen that tape, that the child is speaking. There were times when I was even interrupting her. Because you know, the first thing you do when your child alleges they were molested is to grab a camera. Creepy Android, meanwhile, does not believe it happened. Not deep down, anyway. This is a man of impressive intellectual capability who is well versed in the law and would have parsed over the minutiae of the case as he grew older. There is no way, no way at all, that you could look at this case in a forensic and rational way and come away with the impression that a crime had been committed. The creepy Android has been blinded by ideology and his mother's psychotic matriarchal control. And I'm sure he wants the allegation to be true to be faithful to his sister, who possibly has convinced himself, but ultimately, in the dark of night, he knows it to be false. The behavior of these dysfunctional people all of these years later is also quite instructive. They show remarkably little interest in putting the past behind them and no desire to simply get on with their lives. If I were Mia and sincere, I would be encouraging Dylan to find peace through therapy or simply telling her to focus on her future. But no, the vindictiveness and total fixation these three players have is testament to their desire not for justice or peace, but the total annihilation of the man Mia Farrow has instructed them to hate. Even if all three sincerely believe this event actually happened, their obsession with the alleged molester 10, 20, 30 years later is so psychologically unhealthy. What other victims of child molestation would want to appear over and over again on television and endlessly use their social media to discuss an alleged molestation that happened to them 30 years prior? The reason she is doing this is because Mia Farrow and her psychotic rage that still exists for the man who left her in 1992 has embarked on a decades-long tsunami of relentless manipulation in the household that has left her daughter a dysfunctional mess, the specter of Woody Allen forever looming large. Dylan wants this man destroyed because Mia Farrow wants this man destroyed. Number five, Woody Allen's behavior. Why did Woody Allen decide one day to become a child molester and then just as abruptly stop? Why did he decide to commit such a grotesque crime that was completely out of character at the exact moment he had begun a new romantic relationship with the woman he would go on to marry? What would compel a sane, rational man to decide one day in the middle of a very fraught and contentious separation with his ex-partner and in a house full of people to sneak away for five minutes and commit an unspeakable crime against his own daughter. Well, the simplest explanation is usually the right one. The simplest explanation is not the one where Woody Allen sexually assaults his own child for a few minutes one day and then goes on never to commit a similar crime again. The simplest explanation is the one that is older than the pyramids in Egypt a spurned vindictive lover out for total annihilation. But why are people so quick to give Dylan the benefit of the doubt? Dylan, as discussed, has been properly primed. When she appears on TV, she looks like she is in the middle of a nervous breakdown. Believing her is relatively easy if you haven't spent any time looking into the case, and you think Woody Allen is a creep because he married his own daughter or something. The truth is, Woody Allen has behaved like an innocent person. When this allegation was made, he submitted himself voluntarily to a lie detector test, which Mia Farrow didn't, by the way, and refused to settle the case, fighting instead to clear his name. He says in his autobiography, apropos of nothing, I wouldn't settle the case. I said I don't care about bad publicity, I never abused Dylan, and I'm not settling for a dime. Woody Allen has behaved like an innocent person, and every detail about this case points to his innocence. Here's the truth. The media are not interested in nuanced discussion, but merely emotional manipulation. None of the questions or inconsistencies I've mentioned are ever raised by any journalist. They continue to bully, that's what this is, bullying. They continue to bully an 85-year-old man who has long since moved on with his life and is still married to the woman he fell in love with 30 years ago. His children are being bullied too. Listening to this tired allegation be brought up time and again as Mia continues with her crazed, petty fixation on destroying the man who left her. She is helped, unfortunately, by complacent media organizations like HBO and advocates posing as journalists, giving a voice to a woman who has been credibly accused of physical violence and abuse by at least two of her estranged children is disgraceful. Moses Farrow and Sun Yi have both made shocking claims of abuse within the Farrow household. And if we are to have any consistency about this, then we must believe the survivors, right? But no, 
This vendetta against Woody Allen, this campaign of bullying and harassment, is wholly hypocritical. But more than that, it is shameful. I continue to love and support Woody Allen.